from San Rafael, California, this is Democracy Now! Our Navy is smaller now than any time since 1917. The Navy said they needed 313 ships to carry out their mission. We're now down to 285. We're headed down to the, to the low 200s if we go through with sequestration. That's unacceptable to me. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. Expanding the debate as President Obama and Mitt Romney face off for the last time before the general election, we break the sound barrier by including third party candidates Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson in the debate. And Democratic parties may have some differences, but they have both morphed into a militarist, corporatist, anti-democratic force that betrays the most basic human and civil rights. The political establishment, Democratic and Republican, continues to inflict austerity on the American people while they continue squandering trillions of dollars on wars for oil, Wall Street bailouts, tax breaks for the wealthy, and enormous private health insurance waste. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama and Republican challenger Mitt Romney met for their third and final debate before the general election two weeks from today. With the focus on foreign policy, both candidates shared wide agreement on issues including support for the Israeli government, the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, and opposition to U.S. military involvement in Syria. But they clashed over a few key points, including military spending, Iran and Libya. In one exchange, Obama chided Romney for seeking to increase military spending by an additional $2 trillion. Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. We have these ships that go underwater, nuclear submarines. And so the question is not uh, a game of battleship where we're counting ships. It's, it's what are our capabilities? Despite clashing on military spending, the two candidates struggled at times to differentiate themselves on key foreign policy areas. Asked about U.S. drone warfare abroad, Romney said he fully backs the Obama administration's efforts. Let me ask you, uh, Governor, because we know uh, President Obama's position on this. What is, his, what is your position on the use of drones? Well, I believe that we should use any and all means necessary to take out uh, people who p pose a threat to us and our friends around the world. And uh, it's widely reported that drones are being used in drone strikes, and I support that entirely and feel the president was right to up the usage of that technology and believe that we should continue to use it to continue to go after the people who represent a threat to this nation and to our friends. Uh, let me also note that, as I said earlier, we're going to have to do more than just going after leaders and, and killing bad guys. Important as that is. We'll have highlights of the debate, and Democracy Now! is expanding the debate special with third party candidates Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson after headlines. A retired CIA agent who publicly confirmed the torture of al Qaeda operative Abu Zubaydah is set to plead guilty in court today to leaking classified information. John Kiriakou, who served from 1990 to 2004, is best known for a 2007. ABC News interview detailing how Zubaida was waterboarded in CIA custody. At the time, I've, I felt that waterboarding was something that we needed to do. And as time has passed, and has, as September 11th has, has, you know, has moved farther and farther back into history, um, I think I've changed my mind. And I think that uh, waterboarding is probably something that we shouldn't be in the business of doing. Why do you say that now? Because we're Americans and we're better than that. Under a plea deal, Kiriakou will admit to a single count of revealing the identity of a covert officer, which carries a potential sentence of up to 30 months. Kiriakou's indictment earlier this year marked the latest in the Obama administration's crackdown on government whistleblowers. 
An African-American woman in Louisiana has been brutally attacked and left with serious injuries and apparent hate crime. 20-year-old Sharmika Moffat reportedly told police she was set on fire by three men who wrote the initials KKK and a racial slur on her car. She suffered burns and more than half her body is now in critical condition. No arrests have been made in the case. Doctors for the Pakistani teenager activist Malala Yousafzai say she's been able to stand and write for the first time since being shot and seriously wounded earlier this month. The 14-year-old Malala is undergoing medical treatment in Britain after militants shot her for publicly campaigning for girls' education. Malala's British doctor said she's showing slow improvement day by day. She's not out of the woods yet. Having said that, she's doing very well. In fact, she was standing uh, with some help for the first time this morning <clears throat> while I went in to see her. Uh, she's communicating uh, very freely. She's writing. Uh, she has a tracheostomy tube in because her airway was um, swollen uh, by, the, by the passing of the, of the bullet. Violence continues to flare in the Panamanian city of Cologne amidst protests over the sale of state-owned land to private companies. On Monday, police fired gunshots to disperse demonstrators who'd blocked roads. The shootings followed days of protests that saw at least three deaths last week, including a nine-year-old boy who died when police opened fire. The Honduras Supreme Court has struck down a proposal for a number of so-called private cities with their own tax and justice systems. Wealthy landowners had pushed the plan, drawing opposition from human rights groups. But Honduran justices ruled the establishment of private jurisdictions outside of Honduran law would violate the Constitution. Former President Jimmy Carter is accusing the Israeli government of abandoning any effort to reach a peace deal with the Palestinians. Speaking during a visit to Israel on the occupied West Bank, President Carter said Israel, with U.S. backing, has never been less publicly committed to a two-state solution. I think for the first time in my memory of the Mideast peace process, we have reached a crisis stage because all the previous uh, prime ministers of Israel have been uh, detectably and provenly committed to a two-state solution. I would say that every prime minister that I've known has been a, 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 a pursuer of the two-state solution. And I don't know that, uh, that President Obama has found that, pre that Prime Minister Netanyahu is willing to go that route. In Canada, thousands of people gathered outside the provincial parliament of Victoria, British Columbia, on Monday to protest a massive oil pipeline. The rally was billed as the largest to date against the Enbridge Corporation's Northern Gateway Pipeline project, which would carry crude oil from Alberta to Canada's west coast. Critics say it stands to cut through sensitive environmental areas and First Nations land. Rallies were held across the United States Monday in a National Day of Action against police brutality and the targeting of people of color. In New York, hundreds joined the October 22nd coalition for a rally in March leaving from Union Square. My brother was working a late night shift at my, own, my, brother's, my uncle's grocery store and three robbers went in to rob the store and my brother was trying to escape the robbery to not get killed and when he ran out of the store there was a police officer right in front of the door and he shot him. And the police officer says it was a mistake but we obviously, we, you can't just kill someone as a mistake. Across the country, the police brutality movement is finally coming back to a place where, you know, people are really holding police accountable from a grassroots level up to a legislative level. And you know, we see the Community Safeties Act being passed, we're going through here in New York, as well as the class action lawsuit against stop and frisk, all the way down to grassroots level organizing like Cop Watch. A recent study from the Malcolm X grassroots movement found at least 110 African Americans were killed by police, security guards, and self-appointed vigilantes during the first six months of the year, a rate of roughly one every 40 hours. 
A Muslim American man has returned home to New York after his inclusion on the U.S. government's no-fly list left him stranded in Europe for over three weeks. Samir Suljevic had been unable to return from Vienna and Munich after the U.S. government barred him from flying without explanation. He was finally allowed to board a U.S.-bound flight after a public campaign on his behalf. Suljevic says he believes he was targeted because of his Muslim faith. And the longtime Native American activist Russell Means has died at the age of 72. Russell Means was an early leader of the American Indian movement. He helped head the uprising at Wounded Knee in 1973. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're on the road in our 100-city tour in San Francisco.